Hi, I'm Amelia Tamayo. Hanukkah ends on Monday. Nice. In other news... At the start of 2018, President Trump made an order to the CDC that they are not to use certain words in their 2018 budget documents. This list includes seven banned words. Science-based, evidence-based, entitlement, vulnerability, transgender, diversity, and fetus. Now that 2018 is coming to an end, we wanted to know what larger effect seven banned words would have on the country. We spoke to a professor who specializes in the matter to better understand the situation as it pertains to public life. Subsequent reporting uh, suggests that uh, it's not so clear-cut that this was actually a ban. Uh, what seems to have happened was that these officials, anticipating that the Republican Congress would not fund any kind of research that included these kinds of terms, the best way to win a debate is to define the terms of the debate. And the best way to define the terms of the debate is to uh, be consistent in the language that one uses. The Obama administration, we see the same thing. Uh, so President Obama inherited the war on terror from President Bush, and they wanted, the Obama administration wanted to distinguish its policies from the previous administration. So it, um, for a certain period of time, it did not refer to the war on terror. It, it referred to it as overseas um, contingency operations. And so I think we have to see these efforts to ban certain terms or to encourage self-censorship with regard to certain terms as part of a broader political strategy. Here, I think it helps to take a historical perspective. There are three uh, scholars who recently published a paper um, what they did was they looked at the kind of language that members of Congress um, used. They really couldn't predict what party a member of Congress belonged to based upon the kind of language that they used. Things began to change dramatically in 1994, and by, uh, by 2016, uh, they could predict with something like 80, you know, 80 percent of the time they could predict what party a member of Congress belonged to by the particular terms and phrases that they used. And this uh, corresponds with the rise of wordsmithing. Uh, we stop listening to what politicians have to say because they all start sounding alike. Everybody in the Republican Party starts sounding alike. Everybody in the Democratic Party starts sounding alike. And one of the things that's very distinctive about Donald Trump is that he has found a way to cut through that clutter. And uh, for better or worse, he's been tremendously effective at that. So, uh, you know, this, the rise of, of wordsmithing and this use of very generic language by both parties has led to the kind of politics that we see today in 2018. Thanks for watching and happy Hanukkah. Make sure you get some presents for all your Jewish friends and family. Bye!